I'll, I'll drink a Budweiser before I'll drink a Snickers. I mean... Once again with NASCAR 08. And in this episode of our season with David Ruman's number 00 Domino's Toyota Camry, we are going to be completing race 20 of 36, which is going to take place at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the All-State 400 at the Brickyard. It's one of those really prestigious races, even though it doesn't produce very good racing. It practically never has. I mean, the last time I had to race this track in NASCAR 09, there was a really exciting finish, and the reason why I bring up that one is because this game is obviously very similar to that one. Now, this game is not as good as NASCAR 09 in many ways, but I do like the paint schemes and that's about it, so don't know what to expect. In the last episode, we won, I think for the third time in a row, and Ricky Rudd was really in need of a Snickers. And uh, Tony Stewart still in second place in the point standings, which is always nice. Let's go ahead and get to the Brickyard. Casey Mears has the track record with a 48-31. I think we might top that once we're out from behind all the slow pokes that we're going to be surrounded by. Kyle Busch gets the pole again. He's been getting a lot of poles. First it was Tony Stewart, now it's Kyle Busch. This game is ridiculous. Ken Schrader is going to be starting in second. Elliot Sadler is going to be starting third. David Gillen fourth. Our teammate Dale Jarrett is going to start fifth. Hopefully what happened last time and the race before that doesn't happen this time because it's just been god-awful. Tony Stewart is going to be starting in sixth. Jimmy Johnson seventh. John Wood, 8th, Matt Kenseth, ninth, and Denny Hamlin will start in 10th. Let's go ahead and find Michael Waltrip. Starting in 18th. That's on the outside. You really don't want to be on the outside because the inside line is very superior at Indianapolis. Uh, hopefully he can get to the inside line without losing like freaking 10 spots. And then once he's done that, maybe we can get to him and push him forward if he's on the inside by the time we find him. And here are the rest of the starting lineup. Blabbity, blabbity. Blurbity blur. Dale R. Jr. in 40. What the hell? I mean, it's a pretty fast and large track. I mean, Dale R. Jr. doesn't exactly suck at this track, does he? Anyways, starting from the tail of the field, like we always do, in our Domino's car. I selected this one just because this is an important race, and I feel like it signifies all of racing in the sport, and it would be a good idea to pick red, white, and blue. I don't know. Green flag's out, and we're underway for 12 laps. The whole inside line just freaking raped me with on my face and shit. Uh, so there's the Snickers car. Get your ass out of the way. I don't, I don't even want to look at you anymore. I, I can't eat Snickers for the rest of the year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that about. I will no longer eat Snickers for the remainder of 2018. Not after whatever the hell that was. Uh, I'll, I'll drink a Budweiser before I'll drink a Snickers. I mean, before I'll eat a Snickers. Maybe I'll drink a Snickers. I don't know. I'm getting really close to Martin Trex Jr. because I'm trying to dive in to turn three and not make contact with him. I go in from the very bottom, I'll just drive up into him. That was a really corny looking turn three, but we got it done. And have to make my passes on the inside because I don't think the outside is going to do me any good. Drop underneath Jeff Burton, the 31. Got to stay in that draft, otherwise we're not going to get anywhere. We're going to be coming up on Michael Walter probably in the next lap. Oh my god, I saw the outside lane die a bit. Everybody just keeps checking up. Michael Waltrip's still on the outside line, and he hasn't that much time to actually get there. Try not to come up on Robbie Gordon. Wow, I'm getting really freaking loose. I'm getting so loose that I'm tight. However, that works, but that was the case. I drove up into Robbie Gordon. Got that 43 car that I really like. Everybody likes that Cheerios car, right? Great paint scheme. Oh my god, you guys cannot give me room because I keep on making it three wide, and I have to make it three wide so I can make passes. I'm not for the idea of just not making progress. It's really not my kind of thing in a NASCAR game. Maybe in reality, I'd be more relaxed with the length of a race and just deciding who's the best driver on the track. But right now, I know I'm the best driver, and the point of it is to make ridiculous moves constantly to make passes. Michael Waltrip, you've got the inside. Take it. What are you doing, Joe Nemechek? Uh, I remember getting caught up behind Joe Nemechek at Chicagoland. I called him Max Pappas because apparently Max Pappas is the driver. That would be in this game. Stupid ass me. Okay, I'm going to push it forward, Michael Waltrip. You just keep going. Dang it. This car is turning mine to the outside. Uh, Sterling Marlin? Are we just going to start doing this every race now? We're going to have some bogus excuse for racing where I drive over the pages of the field. 
Let me guess. Sterling Marlin is going to be, like, coming off a turn two next lap around. We're starting to really slow down. I'm trying to push Michael Waltrip. I'm failing at that miserably. Okay, get in behind him. Okay, push him. We're going to get back up to speed now. Uh, going through those turns kind of messes up. Michael Waltrip does not seem to be wanting to drop on the inside to pass this guy in front of him. I don't blame him because then it would be a really low entry. I'm hitting the brakes. Michael Waltrip is trying to let me by. And now he's not. Uh, you make up your mind. First he goes to the outside. And then he goes to the inside. Now this guy's coming up behind me. Okay, I give up. I helped you pass like four cars, but that's all I can give you. You're not trying anymore. I don't think he was trying at all in the first place. Sterling Marlon, who's apparently having engine problems or uh, a tire rub of some sort, he's in the back stretch going into turn three. Please make it to turn four or come off turn four so you can get down pit road before we get there. I don't know. It looks like he stopped. He's not stopped and he's not really going anywhere. I don't know. He was hugging the wall down the front straightaway. So we got through turn three. And he's stopping again. What the hell is going on? This car is driving like garbage. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's a freaking loose damn race car. I'm not paying attention to the track whatsoever anymore. I'm just looking at the freaking map. Okay, he's off of turn four. Where is he off of turn four? Okay, he's going down the road. So that's taken care of. Thank goodness. We didn't have ourselves another Ricky Rudd situation. As a matter of fact, if he had been in the middle of the track in the front straightaway whenever we came across him for the first time that would have been a lot worse than um the Chicagoland thing was because it's a narrow freaking thing we got happening between walls I think I did a live stream once uh, early last year in the middle of the night where I was just driving the UPS truck in NASCAR 06 and I was parking it in the middle of the front stretch of this track and uh, the whole field came with a few cars already parked in the middle of the track with me because they couldn't get by and it was just a monstrous explosion it was not forgettable. If you were there, then it was not forgettable. It was just the greatest thing of all time. UPS struck a few cars, couldn't get past me. It was just a, a huge blockade. The guys that were coming full speed ahead, they didn't even slow down. They just ran into us, and it was the biggest explosion of vehicles you would, you would possibly imagine. Like, it's not even imaginable. You'd have to have seen it. I don't even remember if I still have that live stream um, saved in my channel unlisted somewhere. I sh really should just... Um, upload that one clip of that huge explosion right at the finish line from last year. Meanwhile, we've made the top ten. Jimmy Johnson is leading. I don't know how long Kyle Busch had it. Or maybe he might have lost it on the first lap. He's on the outside, so he's been losing spots the past few laps. My car is so freaking loose because of this tower. You can see it. If you can't see it, then you might be blind. And I don't know why you're watching my videos if you're blind, because then you're not exactly watching in the first place. Of course, there's always my commentary. My commentary is, uh, as hot as it gets. Now John Wood is in the lead. I don't like when John... Well, actually, no, that's Ken Schrader. That's Ken Schrader. I actually I have a thing against Ken Schrader right now. Uh, I still hate John Wood more, but Ken Schrader... Hmm. Why is everybody slowing down? Ken Schrader is... Uh, he's, he's, he's on the last straw with me. After what he did last race, he... He blocked my teammate so that John would get past him whenever Ken Schrader himself was a lap down. He went a lap down just to stop my teammate from leading the race. For John Wood. His teammate, John Wood. I'm so, I was so disgusted by that. It's, uh, it takes the words right out of my mouth. But yeah, many stupid things happened in the last episode. I got a flat tire whenever the freaking AI took control of my car. I looked back at the video and thought it happened under the, uh, well, during the replay, but as a matter of fact, as soon as the AI took control of my car, he ran over the debris. I didn't even see it there. I didn't see it coming. Then there was a second debris, which I drove around myself, which was really nice. I'm trying to pass these guys, but I really don't have anything to offer, apparently. I'm going to go down pit road because we're getting low on fuel and our tire wear is starting to come in. Come in with these guys. Okay, 70 miles per hour. Really good pit road entry. I kind of did it as AI similar as possible as I could. I wanted to just, you know, go down the same speeds and the same, you know, progressive braking that they were doing. But we're going to repair damage, get four tires and a full tank of fuel like we always do. Uh, have some fair competition to see who can race it out the best. I don't know if we're going to have the best pit crew because it's David Rudiman. 
Let's take a look at these stats. John was in the lead because he stayed out. Fuck you. And he has the fastest lap out there. Maybe once I've gotten up front and I'll have some cleaner, I'll be able to do it myself. Or maybe if I try bump drafting with somebody, we'll actually, you know, be faster than usual. That's two races in a row. That is two races in a row. My Jackman does not know how to stand up. Jackman? Are you Hugh Jackman? Are you Hugh Jack Offman? Like, what the hell is this shit? Okay, we're in third gear, so we're not going to be as loose getting off pit road now. Ryan Newman's not going anywhere. Kyle Busch is not going anywhere. This is not a smart decision. I don't want to go driving up the track into him. Now i got to deal with them slingshotting ahead of me after pit road because of that rubber banding nonsense that they have. Hopefully this is the most of it. He did pull away a little bit. A little better acceleration than I got off the turn two. We're in 26 at the moment, but we still have a bunch of people pitting. John Wood or Ken Trader. I think it's got to be John Wood because Ken Trader just went out the road with us. He's up there in front of us. Yeah, John Wood was in the lead. The Wood Brothers team, they just happen to be doing really well all of a sudden this season. I don't get it. I mean, Ken Trader was a lap down. He was several laps down at Char uh, not Charlotte, Chicagoland. But still, he's won two races. And then he tried helping John Wood win a race. I am not letting John Wood win a race. There is no fucking way that's ever going to happen. Dang it, pull on the track in front of me, would you? So we're in fourth place now. The leaders are very far away because of that. I had to check up for John Wood, who's coming onto the track. I mean, I didn't exactly do that to anybody because... There was nobody still on the track. They had been going down the road at the time that we were getting onto the track. Obviously. So, can I catch Kyle Busch, Ken Schrader, and Mark Martin? Mark Martin's in the lead. That's kind of a first for this season, isn't it? Or maybe he's already led a, uh, a lap at some point in the season. I don't think he's won a race, but that's a first. Uh, I'm looking at the map. Uh, you see down pit road, it's still Sterling Marlin. He's parked for the race. John Wood is all over me. I'm not enjoying that. But we are catching Kyle Busch. I'm getting tight. I think that's because of the trap I'm getting from John Wood. As stupid as it might be. Maybe I'm just full of it. Next time, bye. Would you stop trying to pass me? You're not allowed to pass me. That's against the law. I'll, I'll arrest you with uh, my Domino's Pizza guy. My Domino's Pizza guy got some handcuffs in his car. You ain't passing me. Only Toyotas are allowed to move forward. Why is his car so freaking fast? I'm trying to catch Kyle Busch and Ken Schrader and win this race. I don't think we're going to be able to have it unless we catch Kyle Busch's draft. John Wood is just, uh... This is the stupidest thing that I am ever going to do in this entire freaking Let's Play, isn't it? I really think it is. Uh, if this doesn't work... I'm going to be mind blown. And very disappointed, obviously. I'm trying to stay straight on this bumper. I'm trying to catch these guys. He definitely did. Slingshot. Slingshot. Engage. Okay, we're going to go underneath Kyle Busch. Don't block me into turn three. Fuck you, Kyle Busch. And I'm loose. Damn it, Kyle Busch. Now Ken Schrader's got a chance to pass Mark Martin. Uh, hell no. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Nobody wants to see that after what he did last race. Not a single person subscribe to my channel wants to see that. If you do, unsubscribe, unsubscribe to my channel because that's that's disgusting. That's nasty. Now bump drafting Kyle Busch. Slingshot engage. I don't think I timed it well. Damn it, I'm underneath you. Oh, we're stuck on him. Oh my god, how did I how did I bump draft him into that situation? I wasn't trying to, I got underneath him and then he got an advantage out of it. Making it three wide into turn one. Oh, it's another exciting finish. My car is so damn loose on tire wear, it's unreal. I think we're going to have a run going into turn three right here if I can just time it right. For some reason, Mark Martin is pulling to the outside. You're not blocking me. Here I come. I'm going to try not to make any contact. Here comes Kyle Busch way up on the outside. Ugh. No. Turn the car. God dang it. Here comes freaking Kyle Busch in the same car that Mark Martin later drove afterwards. Okay, we've got the lead off of turn four. It's going to be a photo finish with me and Kyle Busch. Trying to hold him back. Uh, I think my little block had him checked up. And we're going to win here at Indianapolis going four in a row. 
Oh, that was one exciting last lap. I'm surprised that I didn't spin Kyle Busch going to turn one. I'm thankful that I didn't, even if it is Kyle Busch, to be honest. And John Wood fishing fifth. Fuck you, John Wood. Let's do some more donuts. Yesity, yesity, yes. This is so great. That was another great Indianapolis finish. I think it was probably a little bit better than the uh, the other Indianapolis race in Astro 9, because in that one, it was um, it was just me in the battle between another car, and this one was like freaking four or five cars. But anyhow, we're gonna have some Brickyard Donuts. Donuts made of bricks. Brought to you by Domino's. Just like always, we started in 43rd and finished in 1st, leading only the last lap of the race, which is something I think we've done like four times already, but Kyle Busch started on pole and finished in 2nd, meaning he lost the lead on the first lap of the race and he got the lead on the last lap of the race, but I passed him coming off of turn 4. He got it whenever we went into turn 3, making it 3 wide. I made it 3 wide into turn 1 and into turn 2. So. Yeah, that was probably the best Indianapolis Motor Speedway race in history. Too bad it wasn't real, and it's never going to happen like that in reality. I think we almost had something like that in the 2017 Indianapolis race. Um, uh, at the end of the race, before all that freaking caution crap happened, and they had to cancel the race ending because it was getting late. But you know how it is. That was a really good race. We had a lot of passive lead, evidently, because it was Jimmy Johnson, then Ken Schrader, then Paul Menard, and all that crap. Ken Schrader started in second and finished in third. Mark Martin started 12th and finished in fourth. He led three laps in this race. John Wood started in eighth and finished in fifth. He led two laps. Darn it. Darn it. Jimmy Johnson started in seventh, finished in sixth. He led five laps in this one. Ryan Newman started 11th, and finished in seventh. Paul Menard started 13th, finished in eighth. And he's apparently Paul Menard didn't lead laps, but he had the lead for a little bit at one point, I think. David Gillen started fourth and finished in ninth. Kevin Harvick started 25th and finished in 10th, so that is the top 10. We had some big movers, we had some people dropping back. You can see all these freaking numbers from finishes and start. This just had to be, for the most part, the best Indianapolis race in history. Even though Dale Jarrett finished in 17th after starting in 5th. Matt Kids had led a lap at some point, finished in 21st, so that kind of sucks. Mike Waltrip started in 18th, finished in 24th. My team sucks so bad. I hate it. I really do. I try to help them, and I wish them the best, and then they give me nothing. Damn it, man. Uh, Sterling Marlin, yeah, we saw that just a few laps in. He only ran three laps in this race after starting 15th, finished dead last. After that fantastic race at the Brickyard, we are 767 points in front of Tony Stewart in second place. Kyle Busch, whom we were battling for the win with, is in third place, 825 back. John Wood is in fourth, 873 back. Still kind of salty that he passed Michael Waltrip. And now Ryan Newman has passed Michael Waltrip as well. He's in 5th, 981 back. Michael Waltrip is in 6th, and he is over 1,000 points back now. I kind of wish that he was, you know, like Tony Stewart or Kyle Busch up there, just 700 and 800 or 800 back. Ken Schrader, whom we were also battling for the win with on that last lap, he's in 7th, 1,013 back. Matt Kenseth is in 8th, 1,021 back. Robbie Gordon is in 9th. 1,117 back. Jeff Green is in 10th, 1,118 back. Clint Boyer is in 11th, 1,132 back. And Jimmy Johnson is in 12th, finally, 1,171 back. So that means Kevin Harvick is in 13th. Bobby Labonte is in 14th now. Mark Martin, 15th. Where did Delano Jr. go? Delano Jr. is in 18th now, so I guess he's not going to be making the chase. He's kind of run out of time at this point. He's a good almost 100 points behind the cut line. But Jimmy Johnson is... Kind of trying to lock his way into there. And you can look at the rest of this stuff. Dale Jarrett is in 24th. He's kind of bouncing in right there. He's not going to be making the chase, I'm pretty darn sure, at this point. I know Michael Waltrip will be. He's kind of locked in. He's finishing well in half of his races, so that's good for him. And Dale Jarrett seems to be finishing good in like a quarter of his races, but that's definitely not enough at this point. Now with how far behind he is, Jeff Gordon's in 36th. Damn Ricky Rudd over here. No more Snickers. Not for the rest of the year. I'm not doing that. I'll see you guys tomorrow afternoon for the Pennsylvania 500 at Pocono Raceway, which is going to be race 21 of 36. In the last Pocono race, we finished in 7th place, and I think we could have gotten a top 5, maybe a win if our pick crew had not made a mistake. I think it was the uh, tire changer. Couldn't figure out how to work the gun. And recently we've been getting mistakes from our jackman, not knowing how to lift a damn car or just stand up on his own two feet. So, um, hopefully... The Jackman doesn't know how to lift a car again. 
because apparently we've won the last two races just because of that. Or maybe I'm just full of crap making fallacious reasoning or some shit. But see you next time. That's that. And episode over.